This meeting is being recorded. Hello, wonderful. I am here with Trina Lehman Hansen, and she is going to talk about what to do when we feel like the rug has been pulled out from underneath us. And in my work in this area and my conversations with you guys, I know sometimes life feels like a roller coaster. And as much as I hate to say it, we, we can't always control what happens in life. We just have to control how we respond to it. And uh, Trina is here today to help us respond better. How are you? Hi there. I am so happy to be here. And, and oh, this is my favorite topic because that was my story, you know, feeling like life was this roller coaster on rocket fuel sometimes where I was just gripping on to the end of it, hanging on for dear life. That's how it felt for a long time. And until I had enough, and then I managed to turn it around, but it took me more than a decade. So I'm not, I'm not saying that it's easy, but the solution can be pretty simple because to me, it all comes down to finding some kind of inner connection. You can call it whatever you like, uh, connecting to your soul or your inner guidance or, or God or spirit or source, whatever you like. Um, but when we are out here in the real world and, and it feels like we are a victim to our circumstances, when it feels like or living in a ping pong machine or pinball machine, you know, being just flung around by circumstances and events that gets so exhausting. And it's so easy to feel completely alone. And, and once we sort of turn things around, because what I noticed I was doing, and I know a lot of sensitive people are experts as doing this is that we are so focused on the outside world we are so busy you know figuring out what people want what they expect from us what everybody needs to be happy and and what it takes to make the world sort of turn in a smooth and and nice way for everybody and then we just sometimes forget ourselves and that's where it can start to feel like a roller coaster because if our circumstances are good, then fine, we are doing okay. But as soon as something you know is thrown in our face or life pops up or whatever it is, then all of a sudden, as you said, the rugs pull from out under us, and and then it feels like free falling sometimes. Um, so the first thing is to. Start Stop chasing all the external so that we can even hear that inner voice that I do believe we all have. So I think what I'm hearing you say is there's two pieces of this. Um, yes. One, the preparation work that you do in connecting with self before yes. a major life event happens. Yes, absolutely. And then how you respond when a major mm. life event happens. Yes. Yes, and doing the work first makes the second part so much easier. But of course, that's typically where we start, isn't it? We find ourselves in the middle of, of oh my God, what am I going to do? Because we typically don't get to do the work until it becomes so important because it has life has tripped us up somehow. Um, so what I like to tell my clients when they are in that moment is to sort of breathe and remember all the times where life looked scary and, mm -hmm. and that they survived that too. So, so the first part is simply to just breathe and, and tell ourselves that this isn't the end of the world either. And then I like to take it a step further because I love noticing how all those moments often actually turn out to be important in helping us to become who we're meant to be. So no matter how bad it is, no matter how scary it feels, there is something in there that we can use to look at life in a different way or develop a new skill that we need going forward. Like, I think so many people in our line of work 
we do what we do because we survived that thing that we are now helping others to navigate, right? So, Absolutely. yeah, and and even even just reminding ourselves that something good can come from this, that is a good place to start because then life isn't quite as scary because then it doesn't feel like life is out to get us. And, oh, you know, I spent so, so, so long feeling that life was unfair and that I... I actually think I held a grudge against life because it just seemed so easy for some people while others like me had to struggle for everything. So I don't like the teachings that are just like, oh, victim mentality is the worst thing in the world because I think first of all, it's very human. And second of all, to me, it kind of shows that we have a sense, a belief that life is supposed to be good for us. And I think that's such is an essential part of, of getting to that place is having that belief, even if it's just a teeny tiny echo of a hope that life can be better. There has to be more for me. And I think victim mentality reflects that. So instead of beating ourselves up for feeling sorry for ourselves, because it's not a pretty trait and it's no fun to be there, but even that we can sort of look at and sometimes if we just look at the original intention in the things we don't like about ourselves or if we are if we're shy that typically comes from wanting to protect ourselves or if we are being you know if we sometimes feel a little bit like doormats because we're busy pleasing everybody that's not because we're weak and haven't set boundaries that's because we have this desire to make other people happy so if we could just stop beating up on ourselves that would be such a big first step to any kind of internal work i find and that goes back to what happens before the yes. The, yes. the life that, um, mm -hmm. because if you are in a habit of beating yeah. up on yourself or in a habit of and a decade ago mm -hmm. I was a, absolutely in the life isn't fair how is this mm -hmm. happening to me mm -hmm. I was and my life was really terrible I mean it actually was you know mm -hmm. I, I'm not <laughs> as I look <laughs> back now it's depending on where people are it, it's mm -hmm. not as if I look back now and say Oh, things weren't really that bad. They were mm. absolutely as bad yeah. as I yeah. thought they were. And so I was very, very unhappy. Mm. And yes. I asked the question, who would be good at that? Mm. Right? Yeah. So in the situation I was in, leading up to deciding whether or not I was going to get a divorce, I had a newborn mm. baby. I'm pretty mm. sure I just moved my husband out of the house. Um, <laughs> that was, that was a decade ago, right? Yeah. Um, Mother's Day was especially terrible. You and I are recording this right before Mother's Day in the U.S. And it was particularly oh, yeah. terrible. Hmm. And, um, you know, getting from there to here, mm -hmm. I know involves two pieces. And that's what I hear you talking about. It's that reframing before something terrible happens so that I call it the um, emotional padding, right? We have a, a bit yes. more. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Emotional padding. Mm -hmm. So when that happens. Um, and at that yeah. time, I remember very distinctly thinking, I haven't lived through anything really terrible that things got better from. Hmm. And as I mature because that I that that what you're talking about and most of my listeners yeah. are re, I'll call them quote unquote real adults, you know, yes. <laughs> <Not like laughs> 20s or something where it's just it's almost impossible yeah. to see that that early hmm. in life just haven't lived long enough. Yeah, absolutely. Way, you know, yeah. um, so I, I hear that and it's really taking me back to, hmm. you know. 10 years ago, right? Where yeah. um, life was actually really terrible and I was really bitter and angry. Yeah. And I'm okay with that because the situations I was in were really yeah. terrible, right? Yeah. And that, that piece is forgiving yourself and being kind mm -hmm. enough then to say, well, it was, it was bad 
I, I'm yeah, really thankful yeah. to be there. Uh, but I think it's just that change that you're talking about, not staying there, but having yeah. that growth mindset mm. and being fun to yourself and, and reframing your yes. thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's a big part of it. And of course, that's difficult when we're in it. And absolutely, as you say, life gets easier with experience. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, And oh, my God, I remember. Life gets easier when we learn from our experience. May I add that? Yes. (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. Yes. Repeat pattern. And it's like, didn't Mm. you? And I, I this yeah. before and it said I know life will always there will always be problems in life I yeah. want to keep having a better set of problems oh yes yes right yeah instead of running into the same one every time yeah. but but sometimes I've noticed that sometimes you know in in times where it feels like there's a million problems sometimes if you look at them it's actually just the same one that keeps popping up in a new disguise until you actually sort of kind of at least get one layer deeper and then oh god I can't count how many times I thought oh I'm over that I figured that one out now I can move on and then all of a sudden it just pops up and I'm like oh my god that's that thing again just in a new sort of a new from a new angle or a new nuance of it yeah and mine has been toxic people as you might as you might yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. um it's just another layer it's definitely gotten outsourced right so it's not yeah, as people yeah. as that can get in and hurt me as deep but mm. just kind of the the layering of that and it's um what i can say now is i'm no longer fooled and i have things ahead of time in place to not yes fall into the fall off the cliff right at earlier times in my life it was a fall Mm -hmm. off the cliff problem and now it's a gosh I'm just so disappointed it turned out Mm -hmm. that way I'm so disappointed that their behavior revealed that that's who they were right and but it's a disappointment not a disaster yes that's a difference that's a difference absolutely (laughs) absolutely yes well, I must ask because of your work. I know a lot of my listeners have been told they were too sensitive. Oh God, yes, yes. If we had a yes. penny for every time, you know. Yeah, I thought you might have some opinions on that. Um, what would your advice be to someone who has been told they were too sensitive? Oh well. Oh, that's that's such a good question because I I really, 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 really believe that. All of our qualities have, you know, the flip side, the good side to them. And and that's what what my podcast is all about. I talk to sensitive people who found a way to turn it around. And I I call them sensitive superpowers because we do have some qualities that are much needed in the world. And, And again, it's that shift from believing what everybody else is telling us. Oh, stop being so dramatic or, or you're just too sensitive or, you know, you have to toughen up and come on, get a grip or grow up or all these things. But it's what makes us, you know, really good at reading people. It's what makes us good at picking up on how other people are doing. And, and honoring ourselves for that is a very good first step not that we have to you know keep pleasing everybody first but acknowledging that even even you know in the corporate world there has to be someone who is aware that that everybody's doing okay or or be that one who's checking in with a colleague who's been you know unusually quiet lately or so so there is qualities in it and we often feel weird and different and alone when we grow up but there's almost 20 percent of us according to to research so that means if there's 10 people if you're in a room where you're 10 people one other person at least will have some of the sensitive traits and i think that's so important to remember because 
we are just all very practiced at pretending to be, you know, quote unquote normal. So you might not see it when you meet us, but I mean, it's kind of easy to spot once you start talking to people and it's easy to connect to someone who's who's like you, who, who's sort of where you don't have to explain yourself, I find. Mm. So there's there's definitely others out there. And, and one of the things about being sensitive is that we might experience emotions more deeply, which can be very exhausting when it's the negative emotions. But it also means that we do have equal access to the positive emotions and for appreciation of the little things. And, and that, that's a place where we can find a lot of, you know, of calm and peace of mind, having, you know, everybody always starts out saying that, oh, you have to start a gratitude journal, because that's one of the ways to turn our thinking around. And, and as sensitives, we can sometimes find that, you know, in our pets or in nature or in, in just those little things. So there's definitely a lot of qualities. Again, well, it's how we look at it. It, it is. And it's, it's that mindset shift. I heard you mention a podcast. Will you tell people where they can find out about your podcast and find out more about you and your work? Oh, absolutely. Thank you for asking. I have my own little corner on the internet that I call trinisplayground.com because that's where there's a link to my book and the podcast. And I have a, a little quiz and I have an event that I call Happy and Aligned because to me, that's just the best emotional foundation. What you call emotional padding, I think of as having that foundation that helps us to be so stable that life can't pull the rock out from under us, not completely. So it is practice, but there are tools. And I spend a whole week, you know, going into that. And that's a free online event and everybody's welcome. We will put that link to that event in the show notes. And can they also find that out on your website for that event? Yes, there, there is also a, a link directly from the website. Yes. Oh, thank you. Well, we will have that in the show notes. And thank you so much for helping us on our journey to becoming toxic person proof. Oh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. And hope you have a wonderful day. You're so welcome. I know we have a lot of sensitive in a good way. And I'm yes. saying that because I know sometimes yeah, yeah. some people say uh, it's sensitive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's going and coming across as bad. So I'm not my uh, world. It's not. Exactly. I know we have a lot of sensitive people uh, who are yeah. listeners. Will appreciate this. Yes. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs>